So we back at it boys and girls. Today we're gonna put brand new wires and install spark plugs in this guy. We're gonna do custom wires that way it doesn't look so janky. Let me show what's going on. So you can see if you don't get custom wires you got some stuff that's like super long all over the place. We're gonna tuck all this and make it look nice and neat. We're also gonna get rid of these boat anchors of spark plugs right here. Look at these things. Let's get a close up. Look at that. That is what I call a boat anchor of a spark plug. And we're gonna pull those out and see how bad they look put the new plugs in there so let's get to it Yeah, so basically I should have showed this. This is the bracket for the kickdown cable, which you still need to install. So I'm gonna cut it here, drill a hole here, and that should make it the difference in the slack. There is adjustability on the bracket itself in that truck. So we're gonna try this first and see how it works. But of course, I'm gonna have to get someone else inside of it to hit the gas wider than throttle to make sure it's all set up. But we can at least get this guy on there and then move on to the next part. And there we go we have our part made right there so to go right here or we can go on this side not sure but that should suffice all right so you wonder how that works we're just going to take this guy right here and see if i can do this in one hand and there we go and that should do it so now as this comes out you have your kick down we're probably going to have to bend this a little this way but we'll worry about that at a later date because i still need to get him in there to hit the gas so you make sure all this linkage is set up correctly. But moving on to the next part. Being the OCD guy I am, I always like to put something over all this so that way by the slight chance, no that's not like that, slight chance that something might try to hop its ass up in there. We don't gotta worry about it. So that's what I like to do. So when I'm doing my plugs and wires, I like to start with the shortest wire with the coil first. Get the coil wire, you have to manipulate everything around that coil wire to all eight cylinders. So you see these are different lengths, and if you count them, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the ninth one, which is gonna be the shortest one, which these three are the same, we're gonna use a short one for the coil wire first. All right, so we're gonna cut it right. Give myself just a little more room than I need to, so we're gonna cut this guy right here. So when well, I'm pulling the insulation off this so we can get to the coil wire or actually the, uh, the spiral wire, that's what these guys are called. I like to use a knife and just barely hit it, go all the way around. Don't push too much, just get through the black section of the wire. And if you twist it this way, like so, slowly twist it. You're twisting in the way that the wire is fed because this is spiral wire or spiral core. And then when you get to the end, you'll see that it won't come on on out. There we go. That's how you do it. Okay, so as you are making your wires, it's very important to pay attention to the orientation of your wire. Because you really want to have to twist at this, twist at this, because this is pretty heavy-duty wire. So what you want to do is, this will go to the coil like this. And of course, right here will be the top of the cap. So what you want to do is pay attention to orientation when you put these guys on right here like that see what i'm saying so that way whenever you crimp it down you're not having to twist the wire like this it can go directly down on there so if you look at this i know someone's going to give you a third degree say, oh, you're doing it wrong you can take this wire and crimp it right here or you can fold it over and feed it and get all this right here i have done it both ways i have had the best luck with folding these guys over and putting it on like this so let me go ahead and crimp it and then i'll show you what i'm working with all right, so this is going to sit somewhat like that. I like to take it and kind of just give it a, a little nudge because it's pretty wide for your tool. And this is why I love this tool. So all you do is stick this guy on this side right here, put it right there, and then when you crimp it, make sure it's nice and straight on there first, like so. You need to back it up, hit it right here. Yeah, let's try this again right there, see? And then you just go... And rotate it on the end, but we're good. And if you had a little problem not get it crimped good the first time, all you do is just put it right back in here. Make sure you get it straight. 
hit it again and there you go that brother is not going anywhere i just use a little bit of wd-40 uh you can use a variety of different things to lubricate this but you have to get it lubricated before you put it on wd-40 have never had an issue with it like i said i've run nine second quarter miles doing this with my plugs i've never had an issue get it nice and lubricated so that way when you push it on it goes right up on there and there you go see see all the way there one down eight more to go and also when i'm doing this i start with number one because it goes one eight four three six five seven two and i'm going to replace the plug at the same time this gap looks big but this is just a stalker and plus we have an ignition box for triple spark so this gap that looks big we're not running nitrous anything else like that so this gap right here is fine for it it's a 50 thousandths in it this is going to be just perfect for this motor so here's the number one spark plug pulled out and look they're running a non-projected tip i don't see why you can't run a projected tip this is the one that the uh, owner picked up for me to use and the projected tip in my opinion is way better for a street car it puts it deeper into the cylinder and you get more complete combustion these you can still get good combustion with them but this is typically for a nitrous motor or something like that but these not projected is uh probably why it's looking like that you can see just how much more it protrudes into the cylinder for better combustion now one thing i'm going to do to help clean up this whole thing I don't, he hasn't agreed to 20 dollars yet but i think once he sees this he'll be okay actually these are more than 20 20 dollars a line 21 something so as long as just slips me 20 for this just 20 for this part i think he'd be happy with it because look at this this is going to be one way to clean this up all together let me show you what it is real quick so it is the morosa universal wire loom and it attaches right there to the valve cover bolts all right i want you guys to see this so if you're ever curious about why you need headers for angle plug or straight plug these are straight plug heads and straight plug headers the reason why you know because this plug could be going in like this and if it was going at this angle of course that boot would be touching the header if it was a angle plug so you would have to either modify this header or dent it in for it to work with a angle plug head but we're good we've got clearance and these are pretty darn tough uh, boots i've had mine super super close and not eat up anything so i think he's going to be just fine okay i want to show you guys this you ever get into a situation where one of your normal tools won't work like check it out put this right here and i'll show you what's going on let me see if I can't finagle this down up in here. But if you look right here, you can see that I am not going to be able to pull this guy out. It's going to hit the header and we're just going to get stuck right there, right? So what you got to do is just take yourself some of the cheap ones from AutoZone that are super cheap, cut it down, and then you can go ahead and put that guy on there and have plenty of room to pull her off. Another thing if you notice, you're not going to be able to get an extension and a socket on there. Sorry, extension and a, a ratcheting wrench on there. So you can take this 3 fourth, put it on the end like so, and then break it free. Then you can use your hand. Let me try to switch hands and do this hard holding the camera in there or the phone and then you just take her back like that loosen her up and since we have our modified socket it'll come right on out now I know someone's gonna say why don't you use dielectrical grease and I'm here to tell you it's not necessary I've never used it I've used it a couple of times I couldn't say if it's bad or good but the times I've used it and times I haven't used it, I haven't seen any issues. And as much WD-40 I'm throwing on this thing, which I've also never had any issues, I think it's just fine. So someone's probably gonna have a comment below like, you gotta use a dielectrical grease, bro. Well, I don't, I never had any issues. So there's that. All right, so before I show you guys all this, the only thing I got left to do is we got to tee off these vacuum lines. One goes to the PVC, and one goes to the power brakes. Now, the Edelbrock had a vacuum port in the front. This one does not. Well, it does, but it's not big enough for these guys right here. So we're going to tee off of this. Okay, before you guys start cutting shit and all that, 
what I want you guys to look for is how all this stuff before we input that T in, how it wants to sit, how it's going to line up. So I'm going to put this guy this way because it wants to wrap around. And then if you look over here, you can see what comes off the brake booster. And this is where we're going to put the T right there because that's where exactly where it wants to sit. So I'm going to cut it right there. And we'll put the T right there. Okay, so I noticed this was uh, sitting on the header. That was before I got to it. So I just go ahead and went ahead and wrapped it up, keep it off all that. You see right here, this is where the PVC is now. So everything's hooked back up, plugs and wires. Uh, this I can probably do something better with in the future. Let me go ahead and put one more zip tie right there real quick. Went ahead and put one more zip tie right there. So everything is now buttoned up. It's off the heat. And this guy, I am probably just gonna snip this because this ground's going nowhere. And yeah, so let's start her up. Let's see, if, let's see if she starts up and if the tack down there is working. Yeah, start it up. Let's see if the choke actually opens up. The choke should slowly open up. Looks like it is slowly opening up. It's like watching grass grow, but it's opening up. Let's see if the tack signal's working. Yep. Needs a heavier spring right here. Let a little bit of heat get in there and we'll see uh, if we want to either down or not. That sounds a little better. We'll keep it right there for right now. <laughs> Excuse me. There you go, about 850 RPM. Once he puts it in gear, it's gonna drop. But I'm not sure when he's gonna move it. Like, vehicle rot's a real thing, guys. See this right down here? This thing needs to be pressure washed and hit up. Everything needs to be lubed. He needs to drive this thing. I know he wants to get on the road whenever it's painted, but he really needs to like uh, at least pressure wash everything, get new tires on there and drive it. I mean, if anything, just around the block. Yeah, the vehicle rot is a real thing. You don't want your vehicle to sit, sit, sit like this. It needs a little more accelerated pump, probably a different cam in there, but we'll get that to a later date. Yeah, she sounds good.